welcome back to the channel. That's right, this brand new 2021 Tundra is getting 13.5 miles to the gallon. Let's talk about it today. I'll tell you two reasons why I'm getting lousy gas mileage. And no, I'm not hauling anything, and nope, I haven't put a trailer on it yet. I'll tell you the two reasons why, and I'll also explain to you why at the end of the video. I really hope in 2022, Toyota will go to a hybrid in these Tundras, especially over the turbo-pushed V6s. Let's talk about it. So this Tundra should be getting closer to 14 or 15 miles per gallon, which isn't fantastic, but at least it's 14 or 15 miles per gallon. I'm honestly getting between 12 and a half and 13 and a half miles per gallon on this truck. Now there's two main reasons why. Number one, let's check under the hood. So there's our 5.7 liter V8. This is a fun engine. This engine, while Toyota's had it a long time, I believe they have either tuned it up, they have played with the transmission just a little bit, and I believe they've also played around with the exhaust a little bit. So now this motor transmission and exhaust perform and sound different, even though it was the same engine five, 10 years ago, and the same transmission even five and 10 years ago, it's a little bit different. So off the line, you're gonna wanna punch this truck, at least I do. It is so much fun to hit the gas. And just driving around town, I can't get my right foot off the pedal. On the exhaust, this is stock exhaust, but they have improved this exhaust over the last few years. I believe it was 2019, uh, I'm sorry, 2019 when they improved this exhaust, but it has a pretty good growl to it, even though this is not the TRD Pro exhaust. So reason number one comes down to, it's my own fault, I'm pushing that gas pedal down. It is fun to drive this truck, and I mean drive it and push that pedal down. Secondly, and probably the biggest factor is, I drive a lot around town. So I'm not putting on a lot of highway miles. We all know that when you drive around town, you're gonna get worse gas mileage. So I think that's my second contributing factor. So nothing that's extraordinary on this. However, I'm not towing, I'm not hauling. I, there's nothing heavy going in the back. And I was thinking I'd get a little bit better gas mileage, but it is what it is. And again, it's kind of my own fault on that one. I totally agree. Hey, let's spend a couple minutes and let's talk about next year. Let's talk about the 2022 Tundra that's coming out. We know that Tundra is doing a huge overhaul of this truck. We know that they're gonna be coming out with at least other options and engines, and maybe the 5.7 will stay around, and maybe it won't. We know that Ford went to the turbo pushed V6s, but I believe at Ford, you could still get that Coyote V8 engine. So while we, when you go on the dealer uh, parking lots, most of those are gonna be their EcoBoost, which is the uh, six cylinder engine pushed by turbos. But we also know or at least I think most of us do, that when we start putting on turbos and when we start doing direct injection and we start having higher pressure pressures on gasoline engines, they're not built for this. And what does that mean? It means your truck's gonna run great for a short period of time. It means that that six cylinder engine is gonna be fantastic and you won't, you'll be shocked at how fast it is off the line and it, all those great things. The only thing it'll be missing is that V8 note, right? But what happens when you get to 100,000 miles? Or actually, what happens when you get 50,000 miles and 100,000 miles and 150? In other words, you don't get the reliability that you get with these trucks right here and that 5.7 liter V8. And that is why I believe that if Toyota is going to go to um, either six cylinders being pushed by turbos or hybrids, the more I think about it, I really hope they go to hybrids. And boy, buying a truck like this and going to a hybrid, part of that breaks my heart. I get it, and some of you are probably watching this going, what is this guy talking about? But let's think about it for a minute. The Prius came out, I know, I hate the Prius too, I get it. But the Prius came out over 20 years ago. And that Prius, Toyota has perfected. Think of another car manufacturer that has done as well with hybrid vehicles. There isn't any, right? Toyota has mastered that technology. And that, in my opinion, is why Toyota, I hope that you go to in 2022, I hope that we can go to a hybrid in these trucks versus versus going to a six cylinder that's pushed by turbos and those kinds of things. Again, I would be heartbroken if you can't get this V8, but I think hybrid is a smarter option than going to the turbo pushed. 
All right, friends, I'll end it with a little walk around on the truck and just kind of tell you how much I've been loving this truck. I've made about 10 videos now, so if you are a subscriber, you can go check out that playlist and you can see all the different videos. Hey, I did make one video, like a few things I don't like about this truck. Watch that one with a grain of salt. I see some of you saying like, hey, if you don't like the truck, get rid of it. Look, I love this truck. This is an epic truck. There's just no doubt about it. But with any vehicle, you know, I mean, there's five or six gripes and yeah, all right, maybe I'm being a little bit of a sugar on complaining about those. But you know, if you're gonna try to get the best truck you can get for 50 plus thousand dollars, then I'll say what I love and there's some epic things on this truck. And I'll also say a few gripes about things that I wish were a little bit better. I mean, why not? Who knows, maybe Toyota will listen and say, hey, there is something we can do with that. So it's been absolutely fantastic. I've hit the sand in this truck. We've taken it off road. We hit some fire roads in this truck. We have, uh, found some little offshoots to go down that really tested out the four-wheel drive. The four-wheel drive in this vehicle, I believe, works fantastic. I know a lot of people who are really, really into four-wheel driving might say, hey, it doesn't have that rear diff locker and some of those other things. For the average guy throwing my family in the truck and trying to go see if we can find some mud, find some dirt, find some of that kind of stuff, I think it works fantastic. We uh, got in a couple situations where we needed or maybe we didn't need, but I put it in four-wheel drive low. But uh, a little bit more challenging spots. I thought they did great. Are these tires fantastic for uh, hitting off-road? No, of course they're not. But uh, I thought they did fine. These are the Bridgestone Dueler HLs. So this is really a, a street tire. This is not really a um, all-terrain. But uh, you know, it, it is what it is. And we know that the majority of these trucks are coming with these street tires, probably so that the manufacturers can put on great gas mileage and save a few bucks and keep these wheels and tires as light as they can for those reasons. Now this is the 20 inch wheel and I have to say, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm gonna do for a wheel tire combination here. Whether I'm gonna go BFGs, maybe some Nitto Grapplers, maybe the AT3s, and also what size wheel. These are 20s, I'd like to go down to 18s or maybe even down to 17s. I'm not, decide, I'm not sure uh, exactly how aggressive I wanna get on that. But so far, so good. I mean, I'm impressed by it. I played a little bit around with the badges. I blacked out these Platinum Tundras, and you know, I know you either love Chrome or you hate Chrome, but for me, I kind of like to do a Chrome delete and finish it off. We'll get the door handles going and that kind of thing. The bed of the truck, I know I've spoke to this in some of my other videos, but the five and a half foot bed, if you are a dad on the go, this is an epic truck right here. It fits well in the parking spaces, does all that kind of good stuff. And yes, the five and a half foot bed, at least for me, is plenty of room. We put some long things back there. We load this thing up. We put the mountain bikes back there. It works just fine. It's just not a big deal. I'm surprised that for years I was like, that that's the reason I didn't buy this truck in the last five years. I kept waiting and hoping they'd come out with a bigger bed. But the honest truth is, it's just not a problem. Again, if I was on in the construction world or something like that, where I really, really needed a bigger bed, now I can see why you know, when you go to those construction sites and the, the larger contractors, right, are, are, are using those full-size trucks like the F-150s with the six and a half foot bed and the eight foot bed. You know, if you're a painter or an electrician or something like that, maybe you don't need it. But when I was in the construction world, I needed a bed that was at least, at least six and a half feet. And for a few of our trucks, we had eight foot trucks in our fleet. And uh, those were really nice, eight foot beds that is. And, and those were really helpful for the kind of work and the equipment we were putting in there. Long and short though, this is an epic truck. Do I wish it had a little bit better gas mileage? I do. Whose fault is it? It's mine. I'm the one who bought the truck. I knew what I was getting into. It's also mine because every single chance I get, I floor this thing and we all scream and yell and have fun because it's a fun truck to drive. Hey friends, I hope you have a great day out there. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.